Hi, I'm Kathleen. And I'm Charlene. We're the two C's here to discuss the big C classical music. music. Now the saying goes that how do you get Same. to Carnegie Hall? Isaac Stern said that. Okay. <laughs> Somebody Isaac asked him Stern on the street. <laughs> was asked. On the street. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? At which he replied, <laughs> practice, practice, practice. That's right. Our theme for the week is how to practice, not how to get the Carnegie Hall. <laughs> you got a map, you got a map quest for that. <laughs> that's true. Or GPS. You pay your few bucks and there you are, yeah. you're Carnegie Hall. Yeah, that's right. So why we're bringing up practice is, mm -hmm. practice is something that you must do to be a musician, and that includes being an amateur. Oh, anything. I mean, <laughs> from the time you walk to a, an instrument, whether it's the little harp I have or a little piano or anything, even singing. I mean, you have to practice. Even Doesn't singing, matter. Well, of course. Singing. Well, I meant I was thinking of children in a school. Like I yeah, taught practice. music for a little while, and we used to practice. Oh, you the practice songs. twinkle, twinkle. No, I would practice the songs so that the kids could learn them. I mean, it was important to practice them, not just to sing them once. Okay, and how we is. want to discuss it also is because when you are trying to be a musician, the only way to be a musician is by practice. And I remember reading once that they were did like a study of, I don't remember who it was, it was either a violinist or pianist, who they start earlier. Right. It, I think you maybe it was me, Dory. Anyways, they had done kind of a study of how much practice she had done to get to the point where Is she was. A person? I think she was like 16 at the time uh -huh. or something. And they had figured out that she had like 30 to 40,000 hours of practice. Yeah, I believe it. And then they had studied someone who was in their 40s or something, and they had they were a professional also, but mm -hmm. it was a similar thing. The difference was is that they hadn't started at such a young age. Oh, I see. But it still yeah. took that amount of time for them to, to have, get to a certain to level. get to a certain yeah. level. Yeah. And it was because it, their practice wasn't maybe as intense as hers was as a child. Maybe she practiced well, six she hours had, a day. Maybe had more good supervision also about Fine. it because that's part of what we were talking about. Well, that. we were talking about the fact that no one teaches, no one teaches you teaches how it. to practice. I mean, I know for myself, I learned mainly yeah. from you yeah. and a little bit from Daddy screaming, well, you got to practice one note at a time. And that was your yes. thing too. Yes. So you guys one. are in agreement on that. Yes, that's correct. However, Although, most places don't teach you that. I mean, you, you always used to scream at me because I would do those exercises at the yeah, vocal, vocally and things. Go, yeah, da, that da, doesn't da, teach you anything. Half up the. Yeah. Well, it's a similar thing with violin or anything really, because you once you get a little bit of skill, you start just playing stuff, and you don't really practice it. It's like Jackie, my little grandson. He's able to play some things, all right, on the but on the piano, but. He's not practicing it. He's just playing it, and he his rhythm is bad because he won't use the metronome. They they just introduced that, so possibly it's better now. But as the teacher comes over for a half an hour once a week, the teacher is not going to sit there and say this note and that note and that note. Unfortunately. Well, and that's what I was telling you that that's part of the problem. It, how why they don't teach you? You go to a university. Yeah. And you get like your one hour a week lesson. So what are yeah. you going to do in an hour? The difference is that most teachers are coaches. They're not teaching you the basics. Well, they're supposed to be teaching you. Well, basics. there's a difference. There's coaching and there's teaching. Okay, a coaching is kind of like you figure the person has a certain facility and then you kind of tell them how the piece goes, that idea. or. Musically. Yeah, but that's not what a well, the problem, is supposed to do, though. That's the problem. The problem is that most people don't have the correct uh, basic uh, technique, technique no, they don't. to do the coaching. And if you don't get the teach teaching at any age, basically, you're not going to learn anything from the coaching. You're just going to well, go over plus stuff all the time. Plus, it's a little different in singing because you can't start singing when you're five. It doesn't matter when you start. If you start the correct... I know, but I'm saying 
people like kids who do Suzuki. Yes. Okay. Right. They can start at five years old. Yes. When you're a singer, you can't do no. that because your voice hasn't developed. Right. Kid boys, their voices haven't even changed over mm -hmm. to an adult. But they can do. You can do kind of you basic can do music singing. stuff. Yes. You can even do basic singing. Yeah. I mean, just not. Yeah. Just to get your ear tuned. Fine. I totally agree with that, and I think you should yes. do that, and you should right. essentially have a keyboard background if you're going to do. Of course, you wouldn't necessarily know, hey, I want to be a singer when no, I'm three. That's right. <laughs> you wouldn't even be interested in music a lot of times. I mean, my thing with the singing was seeing Frederica von Stade in that yeah. Rosen Cavalier, so I was 16. Yeah. And I was, and I was behind the times already. Yes. Ugh. When I when I changed to viola, I, I learned as violin. I already went through college as violin, changed at Tanglewood. When I went to New England to study, I had to absolutely start from the very beginning because the violin is not the viola. The viola has a different technique. So that, and I thought, oh my gosh, I actually had to do one note at a time. And he taught me, Pasquale, he said, you have to do this. You have to get that feeling, you know, it's different. It's a, a bigger instrument, so it's a different feeling in your fingers. Mm -hmm. One note at a time, and it drove me crazy. And I did that for months, just really slow. And then certain basic te uh, exercises, I don't remember what they were called, but they were really kind of slow things. And also with the bow, everything is different. So if I, that's kind of the way you should start on an instrument and you do a little bit when you're young but but nobody likes the sound you know so right away you play a little tune so, so you that, gotta be patient yeah you play a little tune so that you get something out of it and your parents aren't saying oh forget this you know because <laughs> a lot of times that happens i don't want to hear that blat, blat stuff right or a blatting of a trombone or something like that but i think that if if a teacher could teach you to make a nice sound from the beginning, which a good, you know, these people that are really talented and can play well young, they learned how to make a good sound, whether it was in, innate in them or which what. Which back to our thing of last week of the starting notes. Yeah, I mean, well, and, and with an instrument, anything, you've got to get that fullness, that solidity of sound, which takes practice, but if you work on the sound in the beginning instead of the technique, I think that's where well, it kind of... Well, you mean of, getting in the center of the pitch? Yes, you can do that at any age. Yeah, okay. Well, that's also interesting because, okay, so as far as I'm concerned, sorry, but none of my vocal teachers taught me how to practice. Yes. I, I know, I know. And I had to do it from a sort of your instrumental thing of the one note at a time, and that's how we practice now. Well, it's and that's how when I learn sense. new songs, I will do the one note at a time thing, yeah, and it and makes it. a huge difference because it really teaches your muscles what the center of those notes are. Right. And then you can sing the piece. Right. So even when I coach with you, I mean, we do that a little bit too. Right. I mean, that wouldn't matter what the okay, instrument so was. Okay. So anyway, what I was thinking because <laughs> I was remembering. When I was in graduate school, I think his name was Richard Miller. Remember when I was at the yes, uh, Mozart Museum in Salzburg? Yeah. And he was yes, there. and well, he wrote he, a book. He wrote a book mm -hmm. about singing, and he does actually in that book, and supposedly everyone in voice should should read his book, but he does make sense. He does talk about doing kind of one note at a time, but he does it. What he's talking about with it is the initiation of the breath. To support the voice. Okay. So he's doing. He would. He would say, you know, do one note, but hold it like for one second. So you go ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. You know, you would do that, and then you would lead on well, to two to get your start. Ah uh, uh, start. Uh, then you go Isn't three ah uh, ah. Uh, uh. So you're doing. Kind. I mean, it was kind of to get it initialized into the one note, but it kind of is the same thing. That, yeah, for the that start. Yeah. Right, to get well, a good sound. Okay. To get that one note. Like, yeah. 